Hi, and welcome to episode 5 of the chronological series. April 2001 is completed, so let's move on to the next game update. Item stealing fixed. Before May 1st, 2001, all drops were shown instantly to everyone. This causes grief when players start to steal items. Due to popular request, this mechanic has changed. After killing a monster or player, you now have one minute to choose the item that you want, and after one minute, any remaining items will become available to other players too. And even after 23 years, this game mechanic is still in the game. And all because of a popular request from the players. Around the next day, there is a pretty big mechanical update. From this game update forward, the left mouse button will now perform the most common actions, while the right mouse button will now show a menu of all the available actions. And that is it for May 1st, 2001. Let's move on to the next game update one week later on May 8th. On this day, RuneScape just got its second game world. The Gawa brothers now have three servers running, two game worlds and one web server. On the same day, there's also another pretty big scaling update. First, the smithing tables got reworked so that iron play bodies wouldn't require 64 smithing anymore. To compensate on the lower required smithing levels to create armor, you now instead will need to use multiple bars. Second is a skilling update to the crafting skill. From today, you are now able to make pottery and jewelry. And with this skilling update also comes two new shops. A jewelry shop in Port Serum and a crafting shop in Remington. There's yet to be a crafting shop in El Carrot. And the third update today is that there is now a goblin quest. And finally, from today, the adamant play body is available in the Champions Guild. So to complete this game update, I would like to purchase and equip an adamant play body, complete the goblin quest and try out that jewelry and pottery crafting. Starting with the goblin quest, to initiate this quest is already different between RuneScape 2 and RuneScape Classic, as the starting location of the Goblin quest is here in the pub of Port Serim. From then on, the quest is the same until the very last step, where the goblins will ask for some regular goblin armor. In Classic, they ask for some light blue armor, while in RuneScape 2, after the graphical rework, they ask for some brown goblin armor. Two crafting levels and three influence levels. This is now the maximum amount of influence that I can get here on May 8th. Influence of 22. Guild Master, what is this place? This is the Champions Guild. Only adventurers who have proven themselves worthy by gaining influence from quests are allowed in here. As the number of quests in the world rises, so will the requirements to get in here. But so will the rewards. What the Guild Master means by that, if we go upstairs and trade Valaline, the only NPC here, with the completion of the newly influential quest called the Goblin Quest or Goblin Diplomacy, Valaline now also sells an adamant play buddy. But this item costs 40,000 GP and I currently only have 3,000 on, so I'm gonna need to make a lot of money. But what I am here for is the quest cape. The blue cape is only available in this shop and you can only access this shop by completing every influential quest. So with this, I have now the quest cape of O1's cape. With 40,000 GP in hand, this is pure by coincidence, but to be honest, Let's trade Velaline to buy that Adamant play body. It doesn't cost 40,000 GP in the Champions Guild in 07. It only costs half the price. It's fine by me. This is the best in slot armor for May 8th, 2001. Completed. There is just one more grind remaining and that is crafting. I already got my pickaxe equipped. 
pickaxes aren't equipable until RuneScape 2, but in RuneScape Classic you had 30 inventory slots. If I were to do crafting in RuneScape Classic, I would just sell everything and I would have 30 empty inventory slots. So to compensate of not having 30 inventory slots, I'm just gonna equip the pickaxe. I think that's fine with you, right? Almost forgot. It is time for the blue cape quest cape. Nice. No more black cape? Goodbye. It is blue cape time. From level 1 to level 7 you can make pots and from level 7 onward you can make pie dishes. Now in the skill guide it says that you can make bowls from level 8. But bowls do not exist yet. So it's gonna be pie dishes until at least 24 where I can make my very first amulet. Making pie dishes comes around to about 3000 XP per hour. Which isn't too bad if you aren't going for the max level jewelry. I am not going to do 3000 XP per hour for level 70 crafting to make the best diamond amulet. Going for 70 crafting would take longer than the new crafting methods to be released. So that for me is out of the question. I'm gonna be going for I think 24 for at least a sapphire amulet. I'll need to find a way how to get a sapphire though. I've been enjoying this crafting method to be honest, but since it's been a week or so, I've been doing this crafting method for like 33 hours now. I think a level 50 will be enough. Now on my way, I have mined quite a lot of clay and I've gotten two sapphires and two emerald gems from mining. And currently the only way to obtain gems is randomly by mining and since I can't trade other players, since I didn't get either a ruby or a diamond, that is quite unfortunate. I really wanted to make a ruby amulet to make it into a strength amulet later, but the goblin quest is completed. I was able to buy an adamant plate body from the champions guild, made a strong amulet and continued doing pottery crafting until level 50. Let's move on to the next game update. On the 10th of May, there were lots of minor alterations and bug fixes to the game. Most notably, since there are now two game worlds to play on, from today you can now message your friends from across game servers. And a second change is that the game mechanic of influence has been removed and replaced with quest points. Access into the Champions Guild no longer requires the maximum amount of influence but instead it will now require you to have 30 quest points. It is going to require 32 quest points later this year. And that is already it for the game update for the 10th of May. Let's immediately head on to the next big game update in two weeks. Following the smithing rework, implemented on May 8th, today marks another significant overhaul, this time focusing on magic and prayer. The previous separation of good and evil magic skills, each with their own spellbook containing 5 spells, have been replaced with a unified magic skill, and a new spellbook featuring 24 brand new spells. This spellbook also introduces spells that use 5 new runes and these are only obtainable as rare drops from NPCs. Similarly, the good and evil prayer skills, which had no use, have been consolidated into a single prayer skill. This skill now has 14 new prayers, 
which let you temporarily cause various effects on your character. These are the 9 combat boosting prayers, rapid restore, rapid heal, protect item, protect from missiles, and paralyze monster. The last prayer, paralyze monster, works basically the same as protect from melee in old school runescape. And finally, we also have a new monster in game, the Ice Warrior. Both in RuneScape Classic and in Old School RuneScape, the Ice Warrior's combat level is 57. But the Ice Giant in Old School RuneScape is only combat 53, while in RuneScape Classic, the Ice Giant is combat 68. So in Old School RuneScape, it would technically be the new strongest monster. But not in Classic. To complete this game update, I have set myself the goal to cast a spell using every single new rune. But therefore, I will need to train a little bit of magic. Magic, though, was infamously expensive prior to the release of the Runecraft skill, which was uh, with the release of RuneScape 2 in 2004. Fortunately, I still have about 23k left from the 40 smithing grind showcased in the last video. Now, you could only buy mind, body and elemental runes with limited stock, making the magic shops basically always being out of stock. So before the runecraft skill in 2004, the most common way to gather runes was to kill dark wizards. However, due to the introduction of the combat triangle in runescape 2, these wizards also transitioned to using magic instead of melee, making them much more challenging to grind a lot of in old school runescape. So to compensate of not being able to grind a lot of dark wizards, I'm just gonna be buying my mind and air runes from Aubrey. I'm still quite uncertain if I have enough money for 41 magic, which is the minimum level requirement without a boost, to uh, for the first uh, death rune requiring spell. But if not, my plan is to go back to the Ice Giants, I guess those are the strongest monsters, so if they should drop the best gear that I could sell and hopefully buy some more runes if I run out. By the way, big bones still do not exist yet. There goes the Ice Warrior for the new rune! A lot of runes, that is already one out of five new runes that I need to gather. Also, for the big bones, they are still, oh, I'm dead, not released yet. So if I try to bury them, they are still not released yet. I'm gonna need some more HP. There we go. That was a good kebab. Hey, hey, nature runes. I'm almost out of air runes, though. Hopefully the cosmic runes will come soon. Ice warriors and ice giants are the only ones that drop cosmic runes, I think. So I really want that cosmic rune drop before I run out of runes. Yes, shot! There is the cosmic rune. That one was from an ice warrior. Oh no, I still need death runes. Where do I get death runes from? Is that... Oh. Okay, here we are. So there are a 1 in 128 from all the giants. The hill giant, ice giant, and moss giant. I got my cosmic runes. I'm heading over to the hill giants for the remaining 1 in 128 drop for the chaos and uh, death rune. Yes, dude. That is the ruby... That is going to be my strength amulet. I have the level now to be able to cast the death rune requiring spell Wind Blast, but I still don't have the runes. <clears throat> 1 in 128, and I have not seen any death runes yet. I'm, I'm out of money. I want to try melee, but I also don't have any money to buy any swords. I think this might be enough to buy a steel sword. I got it. Yes, yes, yes. One in 128. Just a little bit over drop rate. 149. 
I think those are all the... <gasps> no, I still need the Chaos Runes. Ah, bollocks. Oh, even in RuneScape Classic, men drop Chaos Runes in a 1 in 128. Perfect. Oh, Laro's nice. I'm off to doing men. Where are a lot of men? Hey, hey, hey! Chaos Rune. Nice. 14 KC. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna clear up my inventory. I really feel like an ultimate diamond right now, cleaning up the inventory. Be right back. Also need a gold bar from somewhere, so I need a pickaxe, which is in Lumbridge. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna walk across the map. Alright. Those are the three amulets made. So to complete this month, I would first like to use every single newly released rune. So I have used a mind rune, a chaos rune, and here is the 1 in 128 death rune, then a nature rune, which is only used for high and low alchemy, as well as super heat. Then we also have a law rune. I can teleport to Verak, the very first teleport. And finally, also... I forgot water runes. I can't enchant my uh, sapphire amulet. Wait, I'm in Verak anyway. To enchant jewelry, the only jewelry that you're currently able to enchant are amulets. To be able to enchant rings will be for RuneScape 2 in 2004. Same goes for necklaces and bracelets. All jewelry in RuneScape Classic is just Fashionscape, except for amulets. And amulets you can enchant using magic and cosmic runes to make them have a use. Now what to do with my ruby amulet? This is gonna require me to get like 30, 40,000 GP to be able to get that magic level to 47 with a plus 2 boost of the Wizard Mind Bomb to 49. But my inventory is currently pretty cluttered and since there is no bank, everyone is still an ultimate Iron Man. The only thing you can deposit in a bank are coins. I kind of need a empty inventory to be able to make some decent money per hour. So with this, I'm going to end the game update of May 24th, 2001. Let's also head over to some RuneScape news from the same date. Last night saw over 2,000 simultaneous RuneScape players for the first time ever. To keep this up with the increasing number of players, Andrew Gower has just ordered yet another server. And if we quickly move on to the next date, to the 25th of May, the fourth RuneScape server is already online. This means that we now have three game servers and one web server. Now to complete May 2001, there's just one more minor game update on the 28th of May. With the removal of the influence system on the 10th of May, that got replaced by the quest point system, on the 28th of May, there's now a separate button to show you the list of all quests. Before the release of the quest list, there was the influence system, but even with the influence system, there was absolutely no way up until today to know if there were quests that you have yet to have completed. And the only way to know if you have completed every single quest is either via third-party websites like tip.it or by talking to literally every single NPC and hopefully one of them will give you a quest. But now it has been made easier to see all the quests that you have completed, not started, and start it. And that marks the end of May 2001. This was a pretty big one with the release of Prayer, Magic, the Quest List, Advent Plate Body, Salt in Champions Guild, 
as well as crafting. And we finally not have only one game world, but instead we got two more, all the way to three. The next game update in June 2001 is also a pretty big one, where we'll have to go on to the very first island of Gilanor. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.